How are you? Great. How are you doing? Doing well. Thank you. Good. Glad we uh, have a chance to talk. Yes. Uh, thanks for the flexibility. Sorry I had to push it back a little bit. Don't sweat it, man. That's life. Yeah, I thought they were going to cover. Um, I'm subbing right now. And they were, I told them I had a meeting uh, today. And they, didn't, they couldn't get anybody to cover, uh, cover me uh, that early. But they got somebody to cover me now. So what do you so, do? What do you do? What, what's your, you know, what, what you doing these days? Well, I'm, I'm just sobbing right now. Um, I was a full-time PE teacher when I lived and trained in Chicago. Um, but my wife and I had our first baby. So we wanted to move back to Texas, uh, closer to family. And Congratulations. Um, thank you. Uh, but I don't have my, I didn't at the time have my Texas teaching certification and I still wanted to, you know, be involved in education um so i've just been subbing and then i i just recently completed that certification so hopefully that leads to a full you know full time teaching job pretty soon but um main like mainly i training multiple hours a day so you know trying to qualify for the olympics how far away are you from qualifying so judo's qualify qualification process is so hard i'm currently number 1 in the nation but that leaves me so it's I'm still so far away from qualifying for the Olympics. You have to be top 23 in the world um, wow. to direct qualify. And my I've only competed at this new weight category only in two tournaments uh, that were Olympic qualifiers. And I placed in both, but I'm still really far on the list. I don't even think um, I'm in top 80 right now uh, in this new weight category. So I'm shooting for 2024 and just time you know, taking a, a slower approach to it. I tried since 2016 at all different kinds of weight categories, really trying to force it, training all across the nation with different coaches, and it just wasn't working. And now taking this more uh, balanced life approach, I guess I'd say I've actually been having better results. I've been having my best results so far in my career. And I was, cl I was close to hanging it up also. So it happened at the right time. That's great. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you. So um, how did you start? What, what's your sports history? Um, so mainly judo. I started uh, since I could walk, I guess, because my dad has his own school. Uh -huh. and he, he's done judo his whole life as well. Um, and all my sisters did. So I grew up with that. Um, I wrestled in high school. I also coached wrestling uh, for four years at a private school. Um, as well as, you know, coaching judo whenever I was old enough to become a coach. And then, uh, so that's as far as participating and coaching is mainly just wrestling and judo. Um, but I love football. I mean, I'm <laughs> born and raised in Texas and live in Texas and you almost ha you have to love football down yeah. here. <laughs> um, and then, so that's coaching and, and um, competing. But then um, I had the privilege of doing my internship with uh, USA Judo's uh, national governing body. So I moved to Colorado and trained at the training center and uh, worked in the office there. And then it panned out so well that they um, put me on the subcommittee as the athlete rep. So I've been able to dabble a little bit in sports administration because I think eventually I'd like to um, have a career that's in the field, like maybe do a couple of years as a PE teacher, but eventually be like an athletic director or something. I like helping uh, athletes uh, achieve their goals. And if I could uh, use any of my experience to help them achieve it easier, then, you know, that would, that would make me feel really great. I wish I had somebody like that, you know, who could have just had, like told me everything. I feel like I would have been a little more successful. I think everybody does. That's one of the main reasons why I started this company is uh, I, um, I was a fencer in high school. I played tennis in high school. I sailed, I raced, and uh, those are like my things. So um, I had a really good coach for uh, fencing and uh, he was connected with all the Ivy Leagues and he still didn't connect me with USA Fencing. So I didn't know that USA Fencing existed until I was about 16 or 17. And oh, wow. um, 
so there were like four or five years there where I just was under him learning how to fence and he did a great job. I mean, I got recruited to all the Ivy leagues. Wow. And, uh, you know, I had great grades, so that wasn't a problem. It was just a matter of um, connecting with the coaches and this guy had connections with all the right coaches. So it was fantastic. And I ended up going to Penn and uh, recruited there for that. Then I screwed up my back my first year. Um, so all the grants and everything that you can get that go along with being a recruited player went away. But um, I was still a good tennis player and I tried out for the tennis team, ended up playing squash there and uh, play, I play squash every day now. Oh, nice. That's like my thing. And uh, you know, I'm, uh, I've been able to be pretty successful throughout my career. I was a pro at one time. I was a national champion in the thirties and uh, I was, uh, I just loved it. Uh, my kids have played it. And uh, so that was my thing. I guess everybody needs a thing. It's great that your dad gave you judo. That's fantastic. But you're right. You really need somebody to be your mentor, not in life, but in your sports career. And I, what I'd like to do is hope that if the site itself doesn't do that for millions of athletes as they're coming up, the, if I can connect them with an Olympic athlete, you know, such as yourself in judo, the kid says I'm interested in judo and uh, they want to get involved. It's great to have a top athlete in that sport available in uh, on UB sports. So that's absolutely my goal is to, to connect uh, the, the uh, community for each sport totally vertically from the beginner. And that's a kid or a youth uh, along with his parent. Parents are really important in, in any sport when the kids get in, uh, coming up in, you know, in, in their uh, years and uh, to have a parent involved is super important. So uh, I make sure that any kid who's under 17 uh, has to have their parent involved as well. <clears throat> so that's also important because the governing bodies don't want unaccompanied minors in uh, on the site so that they, right. they can't get in trouble. You don't want them to be predated upon or, you know, and all the, all the stuff that can happen on Facebook or YouTube or all the, all the stuff that you don't want to have happen is basically at least uh, a bit protected if you have the parents involved. Right. So that's a big part of our plan is to have those people involved. So as we're building the new site, which is gonna launch in uh, late April, we're making sure that we have that covered, that we have uh, whenever a kid, well, the, one of the first questions we have is like, what's your name, what's your favorite sport, and what's your date of birth, and what's your zip code or your town? And um, if they say that they're under uh, 17, you know, just by saying what the date of birth is, we say, okay, we have to get your, your parents involved. So um, he, they have given us their email already. So then we say, okay, what's your parents' email? You know, who do you want to be your guardian and your, uh, your person on the site, your adult on the site with you? So that allows the parents to get involved as well. So it's a two for one, you know, because we're getting at least, because if we're getting one kid and their parent, there are probably one or two other kids there behind them. Yeah. So um, like for my, myself, I have three kids can, uh, attached to me on my profile. So, right. um, so that, that's, that's a critical part of the whole plan is that it, this is really a family thing. This is going to be super safe. We were going to have uh, neighborhood monitors on all the sites and all, um, all the portals. So uh, we're trying to protect ourselves as well as we can and as well you know, you have the, what they call terms and conditions. Whenever you sign up for a site, there's a little box I agree. And uh, same thing there. We have a, uh, in that we say you can't be a bad guy. You can't do bad things or you get booted. If you do really bad things and actually do um, contact kids and are, are bad, we're going to um, work with the authorities to get you. Uh -huh. So we just, you know, we're doing everything we can to be as safe as possible. Nice. And, uh, it's to me it makes a lot of sense and, and if you're putting up content uh, especially video content um the first couple of things you put up and make sure that the neighborhood monitors look at that before it goes public and uh if the content's totally g-rated and you're a coach and you said i'm gonna i'm gonna do some judo drills and put them up on my group uh we're gonna look at them and if they're good and if you ask you for permission we'll just make you an approved content provider so you don't have to go through the approval process every time you put up a video. 
So um, those are really important to us. That's sort of in the weeds for the conversation that we're having here. But, you know, just for you, for you, so you know that we're really building this thing super safe. So if you come on, you bring your groups on, your, your kids when you have your kids and all that kind of stuff, you're going to know that it's a safe place to be. That's good to know. That's nice. Um, like, I guess dealing with uh, um, similar uh, types of communication, when I, my last year te working as a PE teacher in Chicago, we had to go all virtual because of the pandemic. And that was a huge thing for um, administration was to try to find that safe environment where kids could log on and communicate with the teacher without having third parties jump on while also giving parents access as well. So it's, uh, you know, that's that always gives you good, um, um, just a good peace of mind to have. Yeah, that. it's good security. It yeah. really is, you feel much better, much better what you're doing. So uh, that's, you know, one of, the, one of the really important parts of this is that we wanna make sure that the head person, the Olympian who's doing this, uh, who, who is curating, or we call it the ambassador, um, as you saw in the ad, um, the ambassador for the sport is an Olympian or a pro or a top player if we can't get an Olympian involved. Uh, and they uh, are curating the content that gets, comes on there. So uh, the rules, for example, you can take the rules um, through a link, you know, regular URL link um, from USA Judo, from the World Judo Federation, um, and you put those links onto that, um, that tab where it says rules. And the same thing for um, skills and drills videos, you take those right off of YouTube or wherever we can get them. You can also upload your own videos so that we can um, make, you know, so you can build your own uh, video library right there. Um, you can also, as this progresses, we're gonna have subscriptions where if you build a really good video library and you wanna be an online coach, you can do that through subscriptions and have people sign up and pay you for doing that stuff and for seeing that content. Um, so that's also a really cool uh, addition to just being the ambassador. Now we don't pay much, we're paying 20 bucks an hour. And uh, really it's, you're doing it because of, of the love of the game, of the fact that you believe in UV sports and our mission in uh, the, the, the idea of getting um, everybody um, learning the right way, learning the right skills and drills, being able to watch the right content, read the right blogs. Uh, you hopefully will write your own blog, which is another part of that. And you can either be written or a vlog if you want. And I do have a passion for writing. And I, I've uh, in the past wrote a couple different um, blogs related to um, like uh, judo. Well, not specifically judo. I use judo as an example, but really uh, sports being the blog was, um, um, oh man, I, I'm blanking on the title, but it was something really clever about Superman and Clark Kent because like, you know, when you're an athlete, you're Superman, but you still have to have time to be Clark, Clark Kent and have, you know, your career and your family and um, be able to just switch, you know, going into a phone booth, like just, just like that, switching the athlete to, to a normal person, I would say. So it was a cool five part, a series blog because I really do enjoy um, enjoy writing, which was one of the reasons why I was drawn to the ad with that content creating um, videos. You know, I need I would uh, practice to to get better because I want a uh, professional quality out there. Not that I'm not good at demonstrating or teaching in person. You know, I can knock out of the park, but I've had it. I had to do a couple different um, video demonstrations in my uh, in grad school um about like different ways to like lift uh lift certain equipment and stuff and like i just remember it taking like several several tries before i was happy with giving uh giving something but i'm sure that's like with anything the more time and practice you put into it the better you get and being able to pull from other sources that already are producing um good content and being able to pull that in and link that would definitely be something I'd be able to do. And that'd be great. Yeah, that's 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 a, a really important part of it is that you 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 understand what it's like to come up in the ranks. So you start at the beginner. Everybody starts at the beginner, 
Um, but what you, we have available now on the web uh, and in technology in general makes life a lot uh, easier uh, on that front uh, for kids coming up. And the more good content we can get um, that is safe and good and is the best way to coach and uh, train somebody, that's what we want. And the thing with Google is that if you do a Google search, judo training, you're gonna get some bozos trying to teach people the wrong way to do things. And what I wanna yeah. make sure is that we streamline this, we get all the nonsense out of there and we just have the best stuff available. And it's, but I don't know, um... I mean, I guess it would be important to find your take on this um, particular subject relating to judo, because the issue that we're having now with a lot of the judo forums and like uh, judo groups that exist like on Facebook or other social medias, there's a huge divide in the country uh, when it comes to judo, as far as judo being a sport and judo being a martial arts, right? So there's like a lot of purists of the martial art who do not like Olympic judo or sport judo at all. So they'll literally spam and troll any type of, um, you know, a competition related judo posting. And um, my view, I think judo is a beautiful martial art, but it's, it's an Olympic sport and this, and it has involved throughout the years with rule changes and with different, um, um, even different geese, different venues that they've been having across the world. Like it's just, it's evolved. And in, in my opinion is, you know, you evolve with the sport. Now, if you want to remain pure, that's fine, but you shouldn't go around and, uh, you know, bad mouth the other side. Uh, that's so easy to block. If somebody starts doing that, you just block them. And so would this, would this be more for judo as a whole or just particularly like the Olympic sport of judo? Uh, I'd say the sport as a whole. Um, if they, if they want to be someone like martial art judo, we can actually have a separate portal for the martial art judo uh, as okay. opposed to the sport judo. And that's fine. The competitive judo on one side, martial art judo on the other. There's no reason why people have to get upset about having someone else. I mean, not competing with each other. They, you know, there's no reason why they can't live arm in arm. And that's one of the reasons why we did this and we put all the sports in one place is because everybody cross trains. I mean, you could easily be a competitive judo uh, person and still believe in as a martial art and train as a martial art. So there's right. two, and there's so many different venues, different sub martial arts. You know, there's, there's karate, jujitsu, uh, taekwondo, all that kind of stuff still are, are martial arts, but they're also sports. And, you right. know, when, when you were at the uh, USO training center, um, they actually had them all right there. And in, in fact, one building, they had Taekwondo, Judo, uh, Karate, and a couple others in, in that one building in town. So, you know, they, they live side by side. And there's no reason why different ki kinds of a specific sport can't live side by side. Right. So, yeah, great. Let them have their own little um, planet in our universe. And we go ahead with the Olympic side. That's, that's perfectly good. Um, I'd never complain about that. And the way we have a hundred sports on the, on the site already and, and probably 15 or 20 fitness venues, including, you know, TRX, um, uh, yoga, uh, Pilates, nutrition, sports psychology, a bunch of other stuff that isn't exactly a sport, but it's really important to have as a whole athlete. Right. So, um, yeah, we're, I'm very, uh, I'm very, um, keyed into being inclusive and making sure that we cover the population. There's no reason why we need to be exclusive or exclude anybody or throw anybody out, except if they start doing something like that. If they decide to troll the, uh, you know, the sport judo side of things, we can just say, great, you don't belong in this group. Boom, you're gone. Uh -huh. So, uh, and that's as we have, we will have neighborhood watchdogs and we're also going to have the ambassadors looking over these things. So as soon as somebody complains about somebody else, either with a neighborhood watchdog or you as the ambassador, should check that out and look what they said. And if it's something that was bad, you just bounce them out of the group or you can bounce them out of the whole site. So right. you know, being really abusive and offensive, you can just say, these guys don't belong. You note it, you send it to um, the administrators higher up, the central administrators. And we go, okay, great. This guy doesn't deserve, on, deserve to be on the site and we kill him. 
And uh, there's no reason why, why we shouldn't do that, especially when you start talking about the other side, that, that safety thing for kids, uh, you know, predation and that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, uh, bad words, uh, God forbid, nudity and sex that shows up on it. We're they're They're gone immediately. Yeah. Um, so that's and and reported to the authorities. So, you know, we're not kidding around about that kind of stuff. That's about as serious as you can get as, as one of our big tenants on the site. Um, uh, to continue, you know, the content goes on to the video skills and drills videos. We welcome you to build your own. Uh, again, if you wanted to have a subscription base uh, on that, you can do that and start selling monthly subscriptions or individual subscriptions on an hour by hour basis on video. And uh, in person, you could also sell those. Uh, if you have a studio, like, like a yoga studio, uh, rather a judo studio um, you, or a dojo, you can have um, that set up. And we actually are building a whole separate app for the fitness trainers. And that would include all the different venues, the dis different disciplines of fitness. And you're able to run your whole dojo right on the site. It's sort of like, I don't know if you've seen the um, app called Mind Body. Um, a lot of uh, the- Or like um, the meditation app, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there are a lot of those around. And uh, so what we're trying to do is be the best in breed on that and offer that as a subscription offering for somebody who wants to run a studio or dojo. So we're doing that as well. Those, those are also really important for us because if I bring in one TRX um, coach who has a studio, they probably have about 500 people who belong to that studio. And if, if um, that coach wants those people to be on the studio, they have to go through UB Sports. So we got 500 members right from doing that. So and they're probably not just doing TRX. Usually what you're doing TRX because you're trying to be a complete athlete for your other sports. So our goal, that's our, actually our marketing plan is to use centers of influence like that and bring them in. So if we can set it up so that it's easy and efficient operationally and monetarily to be on the site and to bring all your people onto the site, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, you know, um, there's um, another group called Athletic Trainers um, NATA, uh, you probably heard of them. They're the men and women who sit on the sidelines waiting for somebody to break a leg at a football game and they yeah. run out with a stretcher and, or a cart and drive you off. Um, that's a whole different, like they're medically trained. So it takes years to get that uh, accreditation, but there are also 80,000 of them in the United States and um, they take care of about 20 million athletes a year. So that's another reason why we're, we're building that app because obviously we wanna bring those people in as well. Cause they're, first right. of all, they're definitely playing sports. And it's also really important for that knowledge to be available. How do I train, how do I um, loosen up? How do I get warm for a match? Like yesterday I, I was, I uh, played squash against one of my arch nemeses. He's really good. And he and I are nip and tuck every day. So um, I went on the cold, uh, on the, court cold, didn't warm up. And I did my uh, warm up about half the time as usual. I'm hurting today. <laughs> you know, my legs are hurting. Like, ah. So, uh, but that's what happens. And uh, it's, it's better if we can have that kind of system on the site so that people know how to stretch and train and cross train and be ready to play. But that's the athletic trainer side of things, the NATA. So that's also really important. So uh, we really building this thing intelligently to be very safe um, and basically be your partner in sports from the day you decide to take up sports till you get old like me and you're playing in masters and uh, you know, you're doing that kind of stuff. So um, if, uh, as far as you would be concerned, I, as I was saying before, you'd be, you'd be getting 20 bucks an hour and you, you on your own time, whenever you can, you, uh, you will be going on the site you will be running the dashboard for judo. You'll be seeing who's joining. Um, you can, uh, well, you'll be expected to curate the site or the portal for judo. It'll take a few hours up front, and that's only because you're collating all that information. You're online, you're going to YouTube, picking up the best training and coaching and skills and drills videos. You're setting up um, the competition video side of things. So, and then you just copy the URLs for that off of YouTube with the embed code actually. And you bring that onto this dashboard that we have where you say title, 
and then the, the uh, code for the actual embed. So people can watch that video right on UV Sports. Wow, yeah, that's awesome. Does uh, the NGB, um, like will they have, um, would they help recruit members and, and put, it, put that out there on their website as well? Or mention but, it out of that? Absolutely, absolutely. That's the best, best thing we can do is to get the NGB involved. Because they're not right. just like at that 20 people or 100 people there talking to 5 million judo aficionados. You know, and that's well, so. And how many how many players? How many judo um, people are there in the United States? Do you know? Not off the top of my head, but I know it's um, in the hundreds of thousands. Um, the uh, just recently, um, our USA Judo had to release their uh, social me head of social media and marketing, so there hasn't been any communication via like any type of way to its members. Um, so like we're hurting for something like this really bad. We need- Are you some serious? Kind of yes, yes. Okay, we that's the first job. <laughs> Your first job is to connect us with them and find the right people who we can talk to. Yeah, I could definitely do that. You know, I'm working with them uh, in the office every day during my internship and um, also the head, uh, um, Perform the high performance director is uh one of my coaches and um you know I frequently see him in competitions and and talk to him about training so he's someone I could definitely reach out to I also have uh the CEO's uh, personal number too and uh could reach out to him because I I feel like they'd want it you know not not having our uh social media coordinator anymore they you know I feel like they need that um that connection with the members. Yeah, right now the assistant uh, to the performance director is now doing all the social media posts on top of all the hard work she has to do coordinating the athletes travel and getting them ready for competition, so. Oh my God, that's crazy. Okay, so yeah. we definitely have to connect with her. That's the first thing we have to do is work with her. Uh, when the site launches in April, we can make judo one of the first sports out of the box. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. Okay, there are 50 million judo players in the world. Right. Yeah, worldwide, it's very popular. France is 500,000. I can't find your, how, how many people in, in the United States. I'm sure France is um, over the 500,000 mark now, too. Is that current? Because I think uh, there are number one athlete is uh actually a judo player he's the face of under armor he's the face of uh power raid he's right. a 10 time world champion teddy reiner and he he's like a movie star over there <laughs> he's actually about to be a movie star over here he was just uh, recently spotted with the rock and they said they're working on something coming up so cool <laughs> yeah okay so that's yeah so th this is what i love about this is that we this it there are tentacles in every sport that lead to other places like, you know, having the rock involved and, and Hollywood involved in judo. And, you know, there, there have already been a lot of movies that have judo as the central sport. And right. one of the things we will, we will be doing as soon as possible, probably within the six, nine, nine months is to try to get access to those videos so that people can go on UB sports and watch those videos, basically like another channel. Yeah. And uh, you can just say what sport you're interested in and, uh, there'll be feature length films. You know, there's feature length films on squash. I mean, of all things. And of course, a lot on sailing. Uh, right. That's an, a worldwide really big sport these days. And especially the America's Cup this year. Um, but the, uh, yeah, they're, they're, if we can get those on the site, people are going to hang out on the site all the time and just like make it their place. And then if you can build it so that you and your friends could watch it in different places, like COVID friendly, watch the same movie sitting down at their relative, you know, their separate houses. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. So this is the goal. Um, I'd love you to be involved. Sounds like it were, uh, it's made for you. Yes. Yeah, when I read the place, it was most of the time I'm already, and I was talking to one of my, uh, yesterday about it. Um, and he's already like, you know, do a lot of this stuff, you know, already. 
And I'm like, yeah, I know. That's why this is so awesome. But it's a more structured way of uh, talking about tournament you know, results at different Grand Prix and, and breaking down, you know, the match between the number one in the world and the number two ranked in the world and, and having people input it and also having that open dialogue. Um, one of my, like, main and you touched on this earlier, about having the, you know, beginners, giving them a starting point and like lead, giving them a path, all on having them, you know, do it on their own. That's what dominates most of my time. At so I travel to all the national events, even if I'm not competing. Um, most of the time, I'm always coaching because I coach, I have a lot of uh, athletes in out of state that have me on as a, as a national coach. But all my, most of my time isn't dominated by coaching. It's talking to parents about what tournaments their kid needs to go to to qualify to go to this tournament, what training camps are happening, and, and just, inf- just giving them information that if there was a place, you know, where it could all be for, them, for me to be able to refer them, you know, I, of course I still tell them, but like, yeah, this is the training camp. It's here in Florida this month. You can find all the information on on the, the portal and that'd just be so awesome the sport. And the other thing too, um, I wanted to mention uh, when you said, uh, you know, the sport so much, and even though I think I do a fantastic um, job as a sister, if there's like, if there's like a bigger name, like someone who comes up to mind um, is like the, since the Olympic, he already has like, so much content created a huge following like if this was something that he would uh be a pro, i have no issue one working with another person or two like stepping down for someone better uh because like i'm doing this mainly for my work for uh, the financial reasons well i i don't think it's re- that's not really we don't need the number one player we need somebody who can be committed and has our vision and is respected in the sport and have the idea is to take these other guys and we can make them co-ambassadors with you uh, or they can just be on the site and just be available um, as, you know, we'll, we'll do like uh, half hour chats with, with uh, the players and uh, we can announce that throughout all social media. So they all come on TV sports to watch and uh they can do that and they just run a chat and just run it like that. And that, that's, that would be wonderful. We'd pay them the same 20 bucks for doing that while they're doing the chats. And if they want to bring in their own videos and stuff, you, you as a curator would love that kind of stuff. Cause that makes your job easier. Right. So we'd love that. Definitely. Don't worry about stepping down or anything. We're not, we're not trying to step on anybody's toes. Um, but somebody who's committed uh, to UB Sports and likes what we're doing and wants to really see our vision and understands how we're connecting everybody, uh, not only vertically, but horizontally across the different sports. That is the most important part of this, is to have people understand and, and want to work with that mission. And of course, the safe environment all, is also the important part, you know, so uh, it all makes, it, it should all be totally logical. What amazes me is that nobody's done this yet honestly right yeah and did, did uh did uh, the usc try a little bit like with their new website how the these go through one way right now well, before they had all their separate websites yeah actually a lot of them had the separate websites before and then about seven or eight years ago um i think his name is john pierce um, at the USOC, he, he tried to build the team USA site. He did. And, uh, a lot of the teams don't like it anymore. Um, you know, they tried it and it didn't really work for them. So they sort of went back to their own individual sites. What we're, what we would really like, of course, is just to offer our portal to the teams that don't want to build their own sites and spend $50,000 building the thing, because we really have everything that you could ask for right here. And it's all free and it's connected uh, top to bottom again and throughout the whole sports world. Yeah, I think that's awesome. And again, it's not just the United States. One of the cool things about this is that as we saw, you know, there might be 500,000 people in the United States who are doing judo, but 
but that's 50 million around the world. And there's no reason why we shouldn't just make that a bigger community of the same, you know, people playing the same sport. Yeah, agreed. So uh, it sounds, sounds like we're like exactly on the same wavelength. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, it's exactly what I was thinking in my mind before having the conversation with you, what I was hoping, hoping it would be. So that's pretty awesome. Really what is. would be um, expected uh, like of an, of an investor? Um, I mean, other than what we've touched on already, as far as like the content and everything and the moderating, is that pretty much it? Or is there like a, is there a particular like set amount of how much content we want? The more, the better, or just, you know, we're kind of tapered throughout the week or. Um, uh, well, you're going to have your hands full because if you think about it, you're going to have beginner uh, skills and drills. You're going to have intermediate uh, and uh, elite. And uh, where, as you grow, you're going to hopefully go from beginner to intermediate to elite. And then at that point, USA Judo wants to look at you. The um, colleges that have judo teams, they want to look at you. So there's other levels that, that come up. And, and you know, you're going to have your hands full getting all that content all aligned properly. So that's a good place to start. But also, you, there's always new competition. Um, every year you have the Pan Am Games. You have the Olympics every four years. You have all kinds of stuff coming up all the time. And just to stay on top of that is enough. Um, okay. But really, it's only, it should only be a couple hours a week. Right. And the first, the first shot is really curating, making sure you have all the right stuff on that judo portal to start off with. Um, the other two parts that I, I think are really important, one is you already mentioned it yourself, is getting you at USA Judo excited about UB Sports and yeah. to, to get them to want to build their own portal, the USA Judo portal on UB Sports, and then to, um, to invite all of their athletes all the members of USA Judo onto UB Sports and have you guys use that as your primary social media. And it sounds like yeah. you have the same idea. That would be a really cool thing to do. Yeah, I think that would be awesome. I really think that would uh, help them out a lot too. It definitely help out the uh, lady who has the responsibilities of making posts now. Cause like, it's like, I don't like it's crazy. I mean, I I don't want to rag like on judo a lot, but we're not as organized as like some of the you know bigger sports that have more more funds, right? And like this past year really hit us hard because a big uh, revenue for us is having events and hosting. We we host several different national tournaments um, throughout the year, and not being able to host those national tournaments really um, took a big hit. We're hosting one upcoming in. Uh, in utah and uh it was supposed to be in salt lake uh city and they pulled out last minute and we had to change venue just to give you an example of like the social media so we're out a couple weeks out and there's just like one facebook post like on there to try to reach all the members like about this city change so like just to give you an idea of how needed something like this is um for our sport and i and i i really think um having a conversation with uh with them about about jumping i really think they'll they'll be open to it for sure and what's the name of the community communications manager who's got this tough job uh so right now, well there's no designated person for it right now but the um the person in charge is uh lauren rosemary or rosemara R O S E M A R A. Okay. She's the um, assistant to the high performance director. That's her okay. job. So she coordinates travels and events and everything. She just recently got a uh, intern who's helping her with that. So I guess that lessens the load a little bit to give her room to do some of the social media. Um, and I, I'm not sure. So I had all this information the last time I ran into the high performance director, which was maybe two months ago, maybe they've hired a social media by then. I haven't heard anything and they haven't made any postings about it. And they normally make postings about um, new additions to the team member, like to their team. Um, and I don't know if they're looking for someone either, but you know, they wouldn't have to look if they had the option to use UB sports. I sure would think so. It'd be a great start. So um, what I would ask of you, um, 
assuming you want to take on the role, uh, is uh, one, think about one of the, obviously COVID's really created a, a, um, a problem with kids staying in shape and working out at home. The, uh, the first video or a couple of videos uh, that might be fun to do is we have, a, we have a portal called COVID Crazy, which is just home workouts. What do I do to stay in shape? Do I, how do I stay agile? How do I uh, practice on, you know, am I, I going to throw a, a couch cushion around? Am I going to, you know, what am I going to do to uh, stay in shape and stay COVID safe? Right. So if you can think about doing uh, one or two of those videos, just introduce yourself and say who you are. That would be awesome. This, is, this video is going to be posted uh, on the UB Sports channel so people can see who you are and understand more about, you know, what you want to do and what your mission is and, um, you know, how, who you are, basically. So um, that's really a strong thing. We're building some really great videos on this. We have, I don't know, six or seven already that we've just done this past week. Uh, wow. We have, we have a, a Olympian um, 5,000 meter runner. We have uh, the captain of the USA field hockey team. And uh, we have a couple other really fantastic players. We have a rugby player. Um, and, and it's, it's frankly, we're getting a lot of uh, pickup from that ad that was in the USOC uh, thing. That was really fantastic. Yeah, so, nice. So that's great. Yeah, so that would be one. Two would be, I'd, I'd ask you to start looking around and, and um, just getting links for the right places to go, the right blogs, the right news. Uh, and then the other side of this that we touched on also is reaching up to the Olympic uh, bodies and getting them involved with UV sports. And that's just like saying, hey, Lauren, when are you available next week to talk to Greg? And yeah. uh, I'll be available. I'll, I'll, I'll uh, set up another Zoom call, have you on it. And we'll just have a chat about what we could do and, and what the new site is going to do and what it should do that we're not thinking about. Because I want to make sure we're really hitting the ball out of the park. And right. uh, if we can get one or two tips from someone who is an administrator like Lauren, and they say, this is what you need, we can build it. You know, we have developers right now working, so I can just say, hey, guys, do this little tool over here that we hadn't thought of yet. Yeah. So uh, we're prepared to be the best and the biggest site around. We're built on the best technology available. The video system is going to be the best ever in the world. Um, I, do you have a um, flow for judo, FLO? Flow? Oh. Yeah, FLO. It's used for wrestling, for um, for gymnastics, oh, like, for track. We have like a yeah. There's a program, but it's not nearly as sophisticated as like flow grappling. Um, and it's ju it just they use it to run strictly uh, like matches at tournaments. It doesn't have like the. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about with, with flow grappling. No, it's not set up like that at all. All right, I, I didn't think so. They've only taken on a few sports and my understanding is they're not doing it very well. Um, so I wanna make sure that we can really do it very, very well. Right. Um, because somebody needs to. I think every sport needs to have a great video presence. Um, yeah. And something that's a guided tour as opposed to either YouTube. I hate YouTube because you, you go looking for something and um, you say, I'm, I'm, for me, I'm searching for uh, squash backhands. So I go to squash backhands. The next thing I know, I'm looking at sailing stuff and skiing stuff and tricks on bikes and stuff that I don't really care about. It took me right off the subject instead of staying. And for a guy who's ADD like me, that's not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Go down the rabbit hole. Yeah, exactly. Once you're in the rabbit hole, it's hard to get out. So um, for me, it's uh, really important to make sure that we have the system set up so the thumbnails on the side of the main picture are things that are relevant to that picture. And if I want to stray, you know, I, I have the way to stray. And let's say it's uh, judo um, uh, takedowns. And I, is that the right term, J judo takedowns? Does that work? Takedowns or throw. Most of the time it's called like throws, judo throws. Okay. So judo throws. So you have something called judo throws. And down underneath, you could have other, other training drills for other parts of judo. Yeah. And then you'll have competition videos for judo down below. But on the side, it's all judo throws. 
So we're trying to stay totally focused on what you came to find out, what you came to learn. And, or just enjoy life. I, I want to watch some fun judo um, videos. And you go to that. Or you want to watch uh, full-length films of judo. You can do that. But those are, those are you know, separate sections of the judo library and separate sections of the UB Sports Library. So we're being really smart about how we're building that. So I'm very excited about how that's going to happen, too. Yeah, it's, it sounds really exciting. Okay, so for me, it's one, um, the COVID crazy video. A couple of videos like that. Fun stuff to do. Two, start pulling in all the information and in, uh, certain um, videos to for content. And then three, get in touch with Lauren. Yeah, and let's, let's have a conversation with her next week or two. And uh, let's see if we can do, uh, do something with her as we uh, start the site. Okay, sounds good. Cool. Excellent, man. Hey, I'm really glad you want to work with us. This is fantastic. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I'm, I'm really excited. My pleasure. Um, I'll also uh, send you an email with, it's basically an ambassador agreement, just saying everything we just said, that's what your job is. And, you know, it's going to work like that. Okay. Great. Great. I'll reach out if I have any questions, but I think I'm set for now until we uh, meet again. Thanks for one last thing. What's your phone number? Oh, yes. It's uh, 817-262-9000. Oh, and, and I'll uh, send you, when I send you my email, I'll include my email too, my phone number too. And okay. You can text me anytime. You can do whatever you want to do with me. Get in touch with All me. All right. Great. All right, Ruben. Awesome. Fantastic talking to you. All right. Nice to meet you. Take care. Great meeting you. Have a great day. You so, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Okay,